Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and today another forecast update coming your way. We're going to be talking about some severe weather possible over Tasmania and Victoria today, some severe storms and heat now on the forecast for New South Wales, some rain over Western Australia and we'll give you a brief tropical forecast as well, especially for far north Queensland. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, if you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Your support is greatly appreciated. So we're going to start things off over in Tasmania and Victoria. Some significant rainfall accumulations have already been reported over the northern parts of Tasmania. Tasmania, with totals averaging between 25 and 50 millimetres, especially for the north coast and the northwest precinct. Some heavy falls are possible throughout the course of today as well as a cold front moves through. You can already see that there is going to be some heavy rainfall, especially over the next hour or so across parts of central western Tasmania into the highland sort of area. And some strong wind gusts are also being reported in the southwest corner with winds as high as 75 kilometres an hour for Scott's Peak Dam and winds gusting stronger than that up to about 100 kilometres an hour now for Matt Syker Island. Some rain also streaming ashore for Victoria and parts of South Australia as well, especially into their uh, coastal divisions, which is much needed, especially for Victoria. However, don't get your hopes up. The rainfall accumulations there are going to be minimal. The main threat from this winter weather is going to be the wind threat. There are some strong wind gusts that are currently blowing through, especially the areas north of the Melbourne metro area, with wind gusts up to around 70 or even 80 kilometres an hour being reported now. And there is a severe weather warning active for the, Alp, um, the Alpine areas around Victoria and parts of New South Wales as well, with damaging winds of averaging between 70 to 90 kilometres an hour, gusting stronger to 100 kilometers an hour expected throughout the course of today and I'm expecting that wind warning to be dropped fairly soon unless this cold front does continue to move in a bit of a straight line which I'm not expecting it to do. I think this rain here is just going to slide through the south west of Victoria and then into Tasmania and I doubt there's going to be much in the way of rainfall accumulations to the high peaks around Victoria and New South Wales but we'll just break that down for you right now. You can see minimal rainfall expected over the coming couple of hours especially into Victoria there's really nothing expected. The most amount of rainfall will actually be in the Gippsland uh, Gippsland region where we're expecting between 10 to 20 millimetres which really isn't much however considering the drought that Victoria is currently being plagued by that is much welcome rainfall across parts of the Gippsland region and some rainfall is well expected to penetrate into New South Wales but again the totals will be negligible there. I'm expecting the wetter spots to be between sort of uh, Ulladulla down towards Bega or Malakuta but really nothing uh, worth reporting on uh, there. The rainfall will ease off in time for this weekend. A few showers still expected for parts of the west coast of Tasmania, but the east coast should be fine Saturday morning and into the afternoon hours. Some showers continuing for the Victorian coastline as well, and between sort of Melbourne down towards Wilson's Promontory, there will be some showers there as well, but they will clear out for Sunday. More rainfall expected on the west coast of Tasmania throughout Sunday, and that could translate to some snow for some elevations above a 1,000 metres. But again, it looks like a bit of a weaker phase in terms of winter weather is going to be moving in for Tasmania. There really isn't too much to be talking about here. You've just got a sneak peek at the thunderstorm event that's going to be blowing through that we'll be talking about later on. But yeah, in terms of real winter weather, it looks like beyond sort of about Sunday, Monday, Tasmania is going to have about a week-long period of much drier, much calmer conditions, and that translates over into the rainfall forecast. You can see here, until Monday evening, uh, to the west coast of Tasmania are expecting a pretty healthy 70 millimetres of rainfall. In fact, higher accumulations expected around Queenstown, Rosabri, and down towards Strathgordon and the dams down there, and some good accumulations still possible across the northeast coast, which are currently receiving between 20 millimetres of rain per hour. That is expected to ease off pretty soon, however, and some good accumulations also possible into the mountainous regions of Victoria, like I said, between 10 and 20 millimetres, but really nothing significant there. But beyond that, especially for Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania, from Monday onwards, right throughout the remainder of the forecast period, there really isn't much worth talking about. There's negligible rainfall for the west coast between 10 and 15 millimetres, but apart from that, throughout Victoria and parts of South Australia, there really isn't much to be talking about here, below 20 millimetres of rain for pretty much every location across those states. So yeah, it definitely looks like things are starting to dry out there, and it looks like the sharp end to Tasmania's winter is going to come sometime in the next couple of weeks. Now in terms of rainfall accumulations, we cannot be neglecting the fact that there is now severe thunderstorms on the forecast for New South Wales, and those rainfall accumulations are going to be quite large from this uh, thunderstorm event. Now the other forecast models are still not calling for this weather event, which makes me slightly uncertain in terms of how this event is going to be developing, but take a 
look at this. From Wednesday morning onwards, we're going to be seeing a low pressure area move through South Australia, uh, really start to develop and pick up some speed then. This low pressure area will combine with a big ball of effectively moist, humid and warm air by Thursday morning, and that will collide uh, together over the top of New South Wales, specifically around Cobar, uh, north or south of Lightning Ridge, that sort of area, and spark up severe thunderstorms between a line of cro across from Mildura in Victoria, across to Tamworth and Armidale in the northeast of New South Wales. And that means thunderstorms across much of central and central eastern New South Wales in the agricultural precincts around Dubbo, down towards uh, Wagga Wagga, Griffith, Hay, that sort of area. Some severe thunderstorms are certainly possible there. Now, these thunderstorms are going to be fueled by very uh, warm air. Much above average temperatures are expected already into the mid-20s, just in the early morning hours across parts of Queensland and New South Wales. And these thunderstorms here will make the most of those temperatures and the high humidity values in the atmosphere, and they will have well, effectively a birthday party over the top of New South Wales, especially for this time of the year. You can see the fuel available for these thunderstorms, what we call convective available potential energy, nearly a thousand joules per kilogram of air. Now that is some very high values. I know this number is quite arbitrary, but uh, when you're talking about the, here, I'd like to use a color scheme here, air, anything in the green that's not in sort of October, November, December, or January for New South Wales, that's where we're really highlighting the chance of some problematic thunderstorms. And you can already see here colors into the yellow. That means that we do have a pretty high chance of some substantial thunderstorms across parts of central New South Wales. It is kind of supported by the GFS. The GFS calling for some energy for thunderstorms to take place across parts of New South Wales. But the Eastern Rift is going ham on this weather event here. So we will keep a very close eye on things. We'll still cross-reference these forecasts between other forecast models. However, uh, it certainly looks like this event here is a high likelihood of occurring, even though it's only got the support of just one forecast model, which means there is technically low certainty in regards to this thunderstorm event. In terms of rainfall, however, we've spent a lot of time talking about the chances of this weather event, but in terms of rainfall, there isn't an awful lot on the forecast. Uh, however, with thunderstorms, the accumulations can blow out substantially, as we all know, and as we have seen time and time again. However, from Wednesday evening to Friday morning, I'm expecting peak accumulations between 50 to 80 millimeters. You can see here, just outside of Barrington Tops and Tamworth, rainfall accumulations approaching 100 millimeters, very significant falls expected there. I imagine anywhere narrowing between the foothills and some of the more plain regions of New South Wales, between a line of Moree down towards Dubbo and Parks, I'm expecting the rainfall to be at its heaviest there, anyway nestled up into a mountain valley where these thunderstorms are going to be traveling up. I think that's where the worst of the rainfall accumulations will be. And I do also reckon that there is a chance of flash flooding, probably not riverine flooding from this thunderstorm event, but definitely flash flooding. And as with all severe thunderstorms, we're highlighting the chance of potentially damaging winds isolated to widespread pockets of heavy rainfall. The chance of small to medium sized hailstones, I don't think they'll be especially large in this event here. And if this event was happening about a month and a half later, I'd be highlighting the chance of tornadoes or twisters across parts of New South Wales, but I just think it's too early on in the season for that to be happening. Keep in mind this thunderstorm event is still six days away from occurring, so a lot can change with the forecast. However, if you stay tuned to about Sunday or Monday or even Tuesday's forecast update, I'll be giving you a very detailed forecast update on this thunderstorm event. In terms of other rainfall from this weather event, there will be a little bit penetrating into southeastern Queensland, a little bit through South Australia and parts of Victoria as well, but again, nothing too crazy. And just before we talk about the tropics and I give you a tropical weather forecast, let's go and talk about the southwest of Western Australia, looking high and dry at least for next week. You can see here, after Sunday, not expecting any more rainfall. However, over the past three days with the passage of two individual cold fronts, we have had some falls, uh, some significant falls across Western Australia, namely 55 mm millimetres has fallen so far in Dwelling Up, and about 50 millimetres has fallen so far in Bickley. So some substantial rainfall observations have been taken across parts of the southwest, especially around the south coast and into the Darling Ranges outside of Perth. Some rainfall will continue throughout the course of today, just in the form of light showers streaming up from the south, but they're going to be replaced by a high pressure system later today, and that's going to lead to a change towards cooler, calmer, drier conditions, at least for the foreseeable future, when it will start to turn warm in about a month or so. However, uh, uh, certainly worth talking about the rainfall and some of the storms that have occurred over parts of the southwest. We've had reports of small hailstones, even medium-sized hailstones up to a couple of centimetres in size, especially around the south coastal regions. And yesterday, the temperatures refused to rise, uh, rise above eight degrees outside of Katanning and Mount Barker, freezing cold indeed. Uh, and it's been a cold start today as well. The temperatures down towards three or four degrees across much of the south coast and much of the southwest. Temperatures as low as two degrees out towards Southern Cross, so very cold out there. 
there. They've had some rainfall as well, which is great to see, especially considering that's one of the driest points in Western Australia right now. And some decent rain, uh, some decently cold temperatures are expected throughout Saturday and Sunday mornings as well as this high pressure system really does build. It will start to warm up, however, throughout the course of next week. And you can already start to see daytime maxima by Monday going in towards the mid to even high 20s across parts of the northern wheat belt. It is going to start to get quite warm quite quickly over the coming couple of days. So again, if you're a farmer out in the middle of the wheat belt or even into the northern parts of the wheat belt, expect those flies to start coming out pretty soon. They're going to be coming out thick and fast with temperatures into the low 30s expected into the Murchison and the gas coin on Wednesday. Temperatures again into the high 20s and early 30s on Thursday. And temperatures just continuing to warm up into the high 20s as far south as Perth and the low 30s into the northern parts of the wheat belt up towards Three Springs on Friday next week and continuing the warming trend throughout Saturday and Sunday as we get in towards the middle parts of September. It is looking quite warm and it looks like that warm weather is going to be flung upon us pretty quickly, that's for sure. And in terms of rainfall, you can see there's really not much on the forecast now. It looks like this winter weather is really starting to die down. Over the next 10 days, totals below 5 millimeters across pretty much all of the state apart from somewhere in the north where we are expecting accumulations now to be at their wettest over the 10 days. So the first time in a couple of months up in the north of Western Australia in the Kimberley region up towards Columbaroo and Truscott. It is going to start getting wet up there and it's going to start drying off down in the southwest. I think that's going to be the last real winter rainfall uh, from the last couple of cold fronts we've had. So let's take a look at the soil moisture values across parts of the southwest of Western Australia. The lowest of uh, soil moisture values lie around Meriden and Southern Cross. Unfortunately, they have had a bad season in terms of rainfall where accumulations have been low enough to prompt minor to mild drought-like conditions being uh, implemented into the models up there. Drought-like conditions are also prevalent around Esperance. They have had a pretty dry winter as well. However, for the majority of the southwest and the wheat belt, especially into the north, soil moisture values are much above average up there. They aren't too high, all things considered, but they still remain much above average. Across the remainder of Western Australia, above average to much above average soil moisture values are also being reported into the Gascoyne and even into the South Pilbara. And some above average soil moisture values still remain from the torrential rainfall in March into the Euclid districts, very wet over there indeed. And the elephant in the room is still far north Queensland, much above average soil and moisture values up there, and that's expected to continue with rainfall, expected to continue to pile on over the coming couple of days. Specifically next week, especially early next week, from Sunday onwards, we're going to be seeing the rainfall really start to pile on up there from some heavy showers that are expected to uh, really set themselves in from Monday from an onshore flow. So the rainfall continuing through Monday, it is light on Tuesday, but at times could be heavy, especially Tuesday evening into Wednesday morning, there will be some good accumulations up there before throughout Thursday we do see a dry off for the weekend Friday Saturday and Sunday remaining dry there will still be some showers throughout the course of today some heavy falls are also possible around the mountains valleys later today and into early tonight uh, and into early tomorrow morning as well before the rainfall once again does temporarily ease off for Sunday still some showers expected across Sunday and like I said throughout and early next week we are expecting some decent rainfall accumulations up in the far north of Queensland some showers moving through right now just south of Cairns around Fishery Falls that sort of area then not too heavy at this time, but we are expecting this to be a pretty continuous trend throughout the course of today. The showers just developing slightly offshore. And it looks like it's going to be quite a cloudy day in some of those mountainous valleys up in far north Queensland. The highest of accumulations over the next 10 days will be around Bartle Freery, where we're expecting rainfall to kind of be between 100 to 120 millimetres over the next 10 days. It is a reduction from yesterday's forecast, where we look, were looking at totals up to 150 millimetres, and now we're talking about between 80 to 120, and I think it might be on the lower side of that. Some substantial rainfall also possible in the Daintree rainforest between 50 to 80 millimetres up there and again for new viewers you're probably screaming through your monitor right now why am I making such a big deal of 80 millimetres? Well it's because of the soil moisture values they are much above average throughout much of far north Queensland especially around the mountainous areas so all of this rainfall here is just going to continue to saturate the ground and when you're talking about values that are at about 100% which you can see throughout the Daintree with soil moisture values averaging between 98 to sort of 100% up here and across far north Queensland on the Casper Coast where they are at 100% across some places we're talking about this just becoming runoff and when you talk about 50 millimetres if it falls in an hour it can cause some flooding which isn't likely over the next 10 days but I'm giving it to sort of a 10 to 15% chance of occurring all of this just adds up and when the real rainfall starts in November or December if we've still got soil moisture values at 100% across far north Queensland there's going to be some really troublesome stuff happening across far north Queensland
Queensland with the torrential rainfall that is expected to come sometime late November into early December. And it's looking pretty good for thunderstorm lovers, especially across the Northern Territory and into Western Australia. Like I did say, thunderstorms are expected to start popping up those pulse thunderstorms across the northwest of Western Australia, along the coastline in the Kimberley region, especially on the northwest coastline. And the chances of some thunderstorms at some time early to mid next week, Monday and Tuesday, into the northern parts of the Northern Territory, outside of Darwin, and especially around water, I'm expecting the thunderstorms to start piping up there. Again, they are slim chances of occurring, but just considering the amount of energy now available in the environment for these thunderstorms I would not be surprised if they really did start to pipe up sometime in the next couple of months or so. It is definitely starting to come in towards thunderstorm season. You're probably feeling it now in the Northern Territory. Let me know if it's starting to get really humid up there because that wet season is very close to uh, starting, that's for sure. Very close to breaking, that is for sure. Warm temperatures as well expected to continue through next week into the low 40s for the, uh, the northwest of Western Australia and the high 30s are parts of the Northern Territory in Queensland and this is just part of the warming trend that we we're going to be seeing uh, really take place and kick in over the next couple of weeks, building up to those really warm temperatures into the middle parts of the wet season. So yeah, very warm, expected to continue, and the rainfall now not far away for parts of the top parts of Australia. Anyways, that is all that I have time for today. If you have enjoyed the update or if you've got any questions, then please do let me know in the comment section down below. Leave a like on the video if you haven't already and subscribe to the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. A special shout out to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now, and I could not run this show without them. They're the reason I have access to all of this great software software so their support is immeasurable uh, that is all for me today and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye